Uh, welcome to the meeting of the Board of Health for Monday, June 10th. Um, we are in session. Uh, Lynn LeBlanc is missing from today's meeting. Um, all else are present. This meeting is being televised. Um, moving into last week's, uh, last month's minutes. Minutes of May 13th, 2019. Oh, yeah. Um, reviewing the minutes of May 13th, 2019. Do you want to make a motion to withdraw? Motion to accept the minutes is read. Seconded. All, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is awkward. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Um, the no, next. <laughs> The next item on the agenda um, is the Weber Farms estate escrow agreement. So Weber Farms is a subdivision here in Easton that um, is served by a shared septic system. So rather than each individual home having its own septic system, um, it's one big septic system with a collection system in the streets within the subdivision. Um, as part of that approval, they have to provide a number of documents and a number of financial mechanisms and communication mechanisms and whatnot so that everybody is in agreement as to what will happen when eventually the system has to be um, repaired or replaced. One of those pieces is an escrow agreement that talks about monies and where they get placed. Um, it's already been signed by the homeowner's agent um, and the escrow agent, which is somebody at the bank. The bank account's been opened. We just need a Board of Health signature on it. So you just need to vote to accept the escrow agreement, and then somebody can sign it. Are there any downsides to the escrow agreement? No, not at all. I, Town Council has reviewed it. Um, I think it's... I was wondering what that was. I, I walk by there every morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the, the field I'm assuming is right on Bay Road. Correct. That's neat that they did that. that that's, uh... In a lot of instances, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. And it's actually kind of sad that the state makes it very cumbersome for them to get the approval. Oh, it's a um, pain. It's a pain. But in a lot of situations, it, is, it works really, how, really well. How does it? work like with the escrow with like the interest that accrues and stuff like that with all the homeowners they yeah, it's they like a homeowners, homeowners association. association right yeah so there's a couple of different ways that they can do it um with the homeowners association that wore an escrow agreement so there's a couple of different legal ways they can structure themselves as a homeowners association this happens to be one of them um, a certain amount of money needs to be at, the, at its fully funded, it will be $118,260, which takes into account all kinds of inflation and what it will cost. And it's all laid out as to who can um, make payments, who we're mentioned in it because we have the ability to say yes, a repair needs to be done, and they have to go ahead and pay it. The escrow agent, i.e. the bank, they're allowed to take um, an hourly wage for anything they have to do for it. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. Sounds good. So, so we just need to sign off on it. Right? Make a motion to accept it, and then you can sign it. Somebody can sign it. Motion to accept. Um, seconded. Make a vote to uh, make a motion to accept the Weber Farms Estates escrow agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. Great. Aye. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Would before the end of the meeting sign that would be great. Uh, absolutely. Um, the next item on the agenda um, is the request for waiver of temporary food porta potty fees at the Legacy Arts Festival for June 23rd. So each year, the um, this event takes place. Uh, Carolyn Cole is the chair. They've asked for this waiver each year. Uh, to waive the poor potty fees and the uh, and the food vendors that come in, so uh, 
we just don't have the ability to do it ourselves, so it has to come in front of the board each each time. And it's done over at the um, Governor Eames Mansion. Over there. Now, uh, Mr. Mills, as uh, I don't just a clarification, if it's a 501c3 charity in the food code, it states that you cannot charge them a fee for that. But this covers other vendors that are not 501c3 charity um, document. So just a little learning curve yeah. on that. This doesn't negate them from actually having to file with us and go through the review and have the oversight. They're just asking that the fee be waived. Um, so we still are ensuring safety for the public they attending the event. Depending on their menu, yes. It just allows for the vendors to go there free of charge, which draws people, which builds the reputation yeah. of, of the whole event and their mission. Uh, motion to waive the temporary food porta potty fees for the Legacy Art Festival. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Um, the next item on the agenda is the update on CBD products. So the update right now is that nothing has changed at the state level. Um, I think, as I mentioned previously, there's some hope that with the budget for FY20 that the gap will get filled because right now it is not part of cannabis control. It's over with Department of Agriculture and Department of Agriculture's stance is yes, it requires a permit. No, we haven't issued any, so there shouldn't be any for sale anywhere, but they have no structure yet for the permitting or enforcement. So we continue to wait to see if July 1 brings a change from the Department of Agriculture. So the FDA has no involvement at all? No. No. Okay. Nope. Nope. Although there was, there is some talk that now because, and it just gets more convoluted because there's now a epilepsy medication that has CBD as the active ingredient and there's something within the FDA that says you can't use a drug as a food additive. Hmm. So they may have actually kind of shot themselves in the foot. Right. So there's just a lot to be sorted out and Department of Agriculture isn't taking a stance on any of it till they get funding to have a program on it. Because it okay. is my take because they basically got thrown to them when Cannabis Control Commission said, well, it's hemp, take it over there. So, so it's we just will continue to monitor. Okay. Yep. Great. Um, the next item on the agenda, discussion of the nursing contract. So I have a draft back from town council. Um, the, the preliminary read of it, Maureen is comfortable with. Um, I'm comfortable with, we're just trying to work out some of the logistics of some of the paperwork that would need to be supported. Um, the contract will call for Maureen to monitor Maven, which is the electronic reporting system for all reportable illnesses. I will be going through the training program for that. It probably is less than four or five hours to be her backup, so that if she goes on vacation or something happens, um, I would be the one to go in and check Maven to see if we have any reportables. Um, the contract says that she will act as nurse manager in the instance that we get an active TB case. Um, at that point, the contract terms, which are right now five, minimum of five hours, maximum of 10 without my approval, would kick in because it would definitely kick up over the 10 hours um, within the week. I am in talks with um, the curriculum people at Southeast Regional about rolling out a new program um, in September where hopefully we'll be able to come to terms where they will have um, some of their students doing our blood pressure clinics Wonderful. and possibly incorporating in their senior project piece um, so that information sessions are given once a month by a different senior on a topic predetermined. So a nice little partnership if we can get that worked out. And for uh, flu vaccine, we will probably be moving towards using an outside contractor. 
And this woman that you're speaking of is the woman who's been doing this position, yes. correct? Yeah. Right. So she's very well many, versed. many many years. Yes. yes. The Excellent. the uh, the outside contract on the flu vaccine that the nurse wouldn't be able to do it or. So there's a lot involved with her as a contract. So number one, the big expense right out of the gate as far as us buying a refrigerator. Right. And the alarm system and whatnot for the sake of 200 doses of flu vaccine. It's kind of not really worth the investment um, at this point. We probably do something like contract with the wellness company or one of the other companies um, that's out there. The majority of the flu vaccine that we do deliver is to staff. Mm -hmm. it's, it's through the teachers, it's through the DPW, um, and then typically we have one clinic that averages about 80 people from the public, if that, 50 to 80? Yeah. Which again, we could do, um, you Just know. Just thinking of last Fulton Vax. Right, and we typically try to partner it up with a another town event like town meeting or an election yeah. so that we get people who won't seek out a flu vaccine but have no excuse when it's staring them in the face. Yeah, sure. Um, that's where we found we've had some success. So it'll be a learning curve on that. There's a lot of um, moving pieces as far as we depend on buying the vaccine using a uh, reimbursement program. There's some, you know, we could possibly partner with the fire department and get something going with that, but there's a lot of insurances won't cover it unless an RN gives it. So our return on the insurance claims right. might not be there. So there's a lot of pieces to balance out right. that I think we're taking on a lot, having them walk away from the table and not having the one-stop shopping that I think for this year, just to make sure we to get provide done, something We'll stick with them. We'll probably just go out with the wellness company or one of those other contractors and see where it lands us, and then reevaluate once we get everything else well, kind of settled. Cost that for that for the wellness company to do it. They're they're none to us, yeah. from what I understand. They're none to the host. Um, and then whether or not there would be copays for anybody availing themselves of it, it's it's still. I got to get the first part of the contract signed. Then we'll move on to that part. <laughs> is we need a nurse, we need somebody mm -hmm. in case something does happen with TB or um, to be able to handle the reportables. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of drain layers for septic alterations within the sewer districts, which yes. is on page 15. Yes, so, um, what I am proposing is that you allow um, DPW approved drain layers to be granted a limited septic system installer permit for no charge for the purpose of them installing grease traps at commercial locations. So within the sewer district, they, if it's a food establishment, they still have to have a grease trap that is reviewed, sized, and installed to Title V standards so it falls under us. There's a permit fee associated with that of $100. But Title V says the only person who can install it is a septic installer. We think that it is a little bit of overkill to hit the installers that are doing that. They've already paid the DPW to become a drain layer. This is one more little piece in the line. They've already gone through the vetting process with the town once for us to make them go through the process and get a separate additional hundred dollar license we'd be doing the same background check it really doesn't make any sense it's not justifiable so what we'd like to be able to do is issue them that septic installer license uh, but not charge for it but they would only be able to use it to put grease traps in as part of sewer construction there currently are only three licensed in the town anyway so if real numbers we're not giving up a huge revenue stream at all in order to make the process efficient and economical. Yeah, have a it. yeah I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense to have them jump through a million hoops for three hundred dollars for us for the year. Right. It just doesn't seem um, worthwhile. And on Kristen's point, reason one of the main things that we want septic installers to do is know what they're digging and know the soils they're in when they're digging the hole for the leaching field, that's it's a huge thing. Like know that what layer of the soil they're in and 
be able to read the plan and say, okay, this might have been a test at <coughs> all and take it out and put the proper material back in it. So that's where we want to, as far as the septic and stop us. So. And this obviously wouldn't change that in any capacity. No, what we do, we have the ability to condition the licenses that we grant. Mm -hmm. So we would condition this, they would be granted it free of charge. It makes streamlines our permitting process too, because now we can still keep them within our um, digital platform. Um, we'll set the cost to zero, but we'll put a restriction in there that the license can only be used for the installation of grease traps as part of septic connections. So that's the one thing they'll be able to do with this license. They won't be able to go put something in somebody's backyard. And is it just for the sewer district or will this be townwide? It, the only reason for them to be doing it would be tying into the okay. sewer. Okay. If they're doing it as part of an attachment to a septic system, they're going to be licensed by us as a septic okay. installer fully. Okay. I make a motion to approve it as stated on page 15. Uh, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Um, and then the next item on the agenda is the arbovirus, tick-borne, and mosquito-borne illnesses. Just to give you an update, uh, I wasn't at the last meeting. Um, last month, I did go and teach the fourth grade about ticks and mosquitoes. It went off very well. I got a lot of compliments um, up for, for the Board of Health and what we're doing. And uh, we gave kids out tick, tick uh, identification cards, um, which we do every year, and um, it went swimmingly, for lack of a better term. Um, as you see in front of you, that today they're gonna start testing uh, mosquitoes through the state. Um, so we'll know by the end of the week if we have any positives for West Nile virus or Tripoli. E. Um, for the people at home, we already have treated the Hockamock Swamp with a larvicide uh, a month and a half ago. And every year that we do that, we do have a, a, a much safer condition for the town. Um, and um, yes, you can knock on wood. Uh, <laughs> so you know, going going forward, we'll have reports for every. It's, yeah, it's going to be bad. We're going to have. We're going to have. Gonna be one of those falls. Yeah, but at least they pre-treated, and people can call the Bristol County Mosquito Control, and give their address in to have them come by and spray. So, and the, the number is available at the Board of Health if they can't find it by googling it, but it's in. Uh, out of our so I was thinking these numbers look very optimistic but then I remembered that it's <laughs> the won. very beginning of the season they said this in <laughs> September <laughs> right, right. <laughs> great that's all I have perfect um, so then moving on to our last item on the agenda is the betterment application for 47 North Main Street so um, this is a case of a failed cesspool. Um, I went there and looked at it myself. Um, it's a small yard, um, so the homeowners uh, they haven't don't, we haven't done the park test yet or have the design plans yet. So we're just doing the the uh, traditional place card holder for thirty thousand um, dollars. Again, they're only the loan is only taken out for the uh, invoiced amounts that are submitted, um, but park schedule um, and go from there so and they're in good standing with the uh, town bills great do I make a motion to approve it? yeah no I'm sorry I'm no worries <laughs> motion to approve the permanent application 47 North Main seconded all in favor aye, aye. anything else well, in, under um, inspector's reports and agent's notes or whatever you want to call it, um, it is abandoned swimming pool season, so we will start getting complaints about unmaintained swimming pools, and I was out on one today. Um, people at home, if you have a swimming pool, you have to maintain it to a point where it doesn't create insect or pest harborage. Um, and these big swimming pools are mosquito bring, breeding factories if they're not chlorinated and chemically treated. Um, and if you don't have a pool that you're gonna open, you can actually put things in it so mosquito larvae doesn't grow in it, which you could buy at Home Depot and Lowe's. In Easton, they get filled with frogs in two seconds if you don't open it. 
Frogs. Frogs at least eat the bugs. Yeah. <laughs> so we had some turtles in ours. All right. Um, that concludes the Monday, June 10th Board of Health. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Uh, the Board of Health meeting dated Monday, June 10th, 2019 at 6.20 p.m. Second. All in favor. Thank you.